Good afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, event, uh, European Commission's uh, representation in Ireland, together with Institute for uh, International and European Affairs for organizing this event dedicated to European Commission's assessment of Irish economy and country-specific recommendations. I would like to apologize for not being able to be with you uh, here uh, today in Dublin due to the last-minute uh, calendar uh, changes. European Commission's uh, Chief Economic Analyst Philip Rettier has kindly agreed to step in uh, in a short notice and he was, will be available also later for your questions and comments regarding the Commission's assessment of uh, Irish uh, economy. Let me start with a broader European economic context and then move specifically to the situation in Ireland. Uh, as we know, European economy is uh, continuing to recover, but we are having a quite modest recovery. Economic growth rates in both uh, EU as a whole and in Euro area are below 2% and we are facing certain uh, headwinds. They are stemming from uh, uncertain uh, geopolitical situation in our neighborhood, both southern neighborhood and eastern neighborhood. Uh, they are related to the slowdown of emerging economies and certain volatility in uh, financial uh, markets. So our focus should be on how we can strengthen the economic recovery Europe is currently experiencing. And we have set out three European economic policy priorities in our annual growth uh, survey. Those are to facilitate investment, to have renewed focus on structural reforms to modernize our economies and to continue with fiscally responsible policies. First on investment. What we are seeing is that uh, since uh, global financial and economical crisis, investment levels in Europe have not recovered to what is considered a sustainable uh, long-term tre trend level of some 20 to 21 percent of uh, GDP. So what we need to do is to strengthen the investment, and that's why one of the European Commission's first initiatives since uh, taking office was European uh, Investment Plan, European Fund for Strategic Investment, also known as Juncker Investment Plan. The aim is to mobilize at least 315 billion euros of both public and private investment within three years time frame, and already now investment projects which has been approved has allowed for some investment of 100 billion euros to be unlocked so we can say we are firmly on track as regards uh, european investment uh, plan <laughs> of course uh, investment it's not only about european fund for strategic investment it's also about creating the right investment environment that's why in this year, year's European semester, we are also concentrating to investment barriers in a different member state. Second, structural reforms. Structural reforms are needed both at European and at member states level. <clears throat> at European level, it mainly concerns strengthening of EU internal market, removing the remaining barriers. Uh, and it, it's especially relevant in areas like services, like energy, like digital single market. In case of uh, member states, there are different uh, reforms in different member states, but some of the recurring issues are reforms re related to the labor markets, finding the right balance between flexibility and security, uh, reforms related to the long-term sustainability of our uh, social and pension and healthcare systems uh, in a situation of uh, population aging. Uh, those are reforms related uh, to taxation, shifting away tax burden from labor, especially low-paid labor to other tax bases which are less detrimental to growth. Uh, there are reforms related to inefficiencies uh, to go in goods and services markets in member states, 
and so on and so forth. As regards uh, fiscal responsibility, this is probably something which is discussed most, uh, but it's uh, clear that there's no uh, such thing as sustainable economic growth without sustainable public finances. That's why it's so important that member states uh, continue their uh, fiscal adjustments where it's needed, that member states are correcting their excessive deficits and also putting their uh, public debt on the downwards uh, trajectory. All in all, the situation is uh, improving and average budget deficits and de average public debt levels are going uh, down. And uh, already this year, we have a slightly expansionary uh, fiscal stance in euro area as a whole. It means while nominal budget deficits continue to go down, in structural terms, we already see some uh, easing. And we believe that this uh, policy mix, slightly expansionary fiscal stance, together with a commodity monetary policy of European Central Bank, is the right policy mix given the circumstances and helps to strengthen the European uh, recovery. Now uh, to move uh, to situation specifically in Ireland. Uh, indeed, Ireland is being uh, used as an example of the country which has made a remarkable turnaround from deep financial and economical crisis to the fastest growing economy in the European Union. And if we look at Ireland's economic growth rates, they are indeed impressive. Last year's growth of 7.8% and also this year Europe, European Commission forecasts economic growth of almost 5%. And we also see that Ireland has done remarkable uh, progress in uh, uh, its public finances. So last month, European Commission took a decision to abrogate Ireland from the excessive deficit procedure. We see public debt on clear downwards trajectory, 2.3% of, uh, uh, of GDP last year, uh, moving down to 1.1% of GDP uh, this year. Also, public debt is clearly uh, on downwards uh, pass and is expected to move below 90% of uh, GDP already at the end of this uh, year. Uh, of course, it's important that uh, Ireland uh, does not lose the, with this positive momentum, that uh, it continues with responsible fiscal policies and continues with the structural reforms needed in uh, Ireland. Because according to European Commission assessment, despite this very fast economic growth rate, there is still assessment that Ireland is experiencing macroeconomic imbalances, which needs to be addressed. Now uh, to move uh, to the country-specific recommendations, which we are addressing at Ireland uh, this uh, year. First recommendation, as to all other member states, concerns uh, fiscal policy, where we encourage Ireland to continue with its adjustment path towards medium-term budgetary objective. And we have certain observations relating to the tax base. Our recommendation is to broaden the tax base in Ireland to uh, also uh, rely more on consumption taxation, on uh, taxation of uh, property, on environmental taxation, because what we have seen in Ireland is relatively volatile tax uh, revenues. And of course, this volatility may uh, uh, ensure very fast revenue growth during the boom years but then also very uh, dramatic fall in revenues uh, uh, during the crisis. Uh, this is uh, something which we had seen before, and there is a clearly need uh, to stabilize the tax revenues. That's why we have this recommendation on broadening tax base to reduce revenue uh, volatility in uh, Ireland. A second recommendation uh, concerns uh, labor market uh, policies, where our general advice to member states is to pursue uh, labor market policies which allow for broad participation in the labor market. In case of Ireland, there are recommendations concerning the activation policies, uh, meaning uh, more 
targeted work with categories of people which are at the risk of economic inactivity uh, to link the benefits provided uh, 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 to those people with activation policies, ensuring that uh, people, especially, for example, uh, long-term unemployed, uh, unemployed are returning to the labor market. Uh, the same uh, concerns the question of uh, 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 tapering uh, of uh, uh, of uh, unemployed and other uh, benefits uh, to uh, 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 to provide better incentives for people to return to the uh, labor uh, market. Uh, uh, basically, what we see now is a situation when. Uh, unemployment uh, 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 when people take uh, the job their unemployment benefits are immediately and other benefits immediately stopped and if they are taking relatively low paid a job there may be actually quite little uh, practical uh, benefit for person taking a job instead of relying on uh, benefits so we suggest uh, tapering those uh, benefits, making some more gradual uh, exit from benefits when the person is taking the job so that people are actually having more incentives to return to the labor market. And this recommendation also concerns uh, uh, parents, including uh, single parents, and addressing the problem of uh, child uh, poverty with also ensuring uh, participation of parents in the labor uh, market including uh, by providing, uh, by, by uh, improving the accessibility and uh, of affordable child care benefits uh, uh, to the parents in uh, Ireland. Our third recommendation concerns uh, financial sector, where we still see a uh, relatively large share of non-performing loans, even though the situation is clearly improving, and we know it's a legacy issue from the financial and economical crisis, we still uh, see that uh, determined effort is needed to tackle the problem of non-performing loans, uh, also to allow for the financial sector to uh, provide credit to the real economy uh, once again. And related to this, there is a recommendation on the credit registry to basically speed up the work on phasing in of the credit registry, which will cover uh, all different kinds of credits and debt, uh, so that there is a full information on uh, uh, on uh, uh, the situation of uh, uh, creditors. But uh, once again, uh, all in all, our assessment of uh, Irish economic performance and also f fiscal performance is uh, positive. Ireland has made a remarkable turnaround. We hope that uh, this year's country-specific recommendations will help to address some of the imbalances which we see Ireland is still experiencing. And our main message is to stay on course and not to lose this reform momentum. Thank you for your attention. And as I said, uh, Chief Economic Analyst of European Commission, Philip Rotier, will be available for your questions and comments. Thank you.